What are we going to do with this lot? I don't know. We're going to be looking at a couple of record players today. The Dan Set Bermuda, which you know, and I just wanted to show you this one. This is another little record player I picked up at auction. I think I paid £40 for it, and I sold it for, I think, £150. Just have a look at one of these. I've never seen one of these before. It's called the Fabulous Wondergram. Now, it's a battery-operated device. It's obviously from the 1960s. Uh, if I can just show you, I've got the original outer of the box there. The, the inner part of the box is obviously missing, but uh, the box, the outside, obviously is in very nice condition. And let's just show you the actual unit itself. It's in full working order. Uh, it's got uh, four C batteries underneath, which you install underneath. It's got these little fold-out legs there, as you can probably see. If I just lift it up there, you can see that the uh, legs do actually fold down underneath. And then obviously it will go in the box if you find a, a, a box that goes inside the actual outer cover. So that's the four legs. Obviously the speaker's underneath. And on the back left hand corner you've got the volume control as well. So you can actually turn the volume up and down. It's, as I said it's in full working order. And what I'll do now, I'll just show you how the unit works. It plays uh, 45 singles and also LPs as well. And I'll try and play you one of each so that you can actually see it in order so first of all you've got the button in the press which you press in and uh, lift up this is obviously the tone arm which um, I'll show you how that operates in a second but first if I get a record if I just take this one here for example uh, you've got the uh, mount there for the single or the record and you've also got uh, in the top of the lid there if I just lift that up a little bit higher You've got a, a spindle which can actually sit on top there if you're playing jukebox records, ones without the ones with the holes in the middle. So let me just put this record on first of all. You, you put it on the spindle, you put the top down, and then you pull the arm outwards, and as you can see the record starts turning, and you then introduce it to the record. The volume control is on the back as I said to you. So when it comes to the end of the record, as you can probably see now, what's going to happen is the arm moves in and it actually turns the record player off. So you won't be wasting any batteries with it just going round and round and round. Let's just put that on there, like that. Put the lid down and as I say, you pull the arm out to start it off. I don't know what this is, so... There we go. A great conversational piece, this thing. And for anybody who loves memorabilia from the uh, early 60s, you're surely going to be very happy to find one of these in totally original uh, condition, in full working order. Right, well, as you can see now, I've painted, I've stained the casing for the Dan Set Bermuda. It's not been polished yet, as I say, it's just had two coats of um, the dye you saw in the previous episode on this record player. And it's looking mighty nice. I'm well pleased with that. What we've got to tackle now is the lid. And what I've basically done here is basically just separate all the elements of the record player and just treat them as individual product, projects. As I said, that case in there was, was one project. I've got the lid in front of me, which is going to be another project. And I don't know whether you can actually see the state of this. Look, these are the uh, fitments for the uh, hood catches. And I mean, they are absolutely terrible. They're, they're, up, they're beyond use, so it's not even worth me trying to repair them. I'll remove them and obviously replace them with uh, new units or reconditioned units from other players, which I've actually sourced and kept as spares. Mm. But uh, this is the sort of state this casing was in, as you can imagine. And how grimy it was. So we've got that there, and we've obviously cleaned it up a bit and you can see that all the way around there now it's a nice deep uh, blue in colour which it probably was when it was uh, originally made and we've just got to 
refer now as I said there's little chips in there for example there for example as you can probably see now obviously there's not a lot I'm going to be able to do with them but those add to the patina of the actual player things like this for example I mean this sort of stuff just shows it's 50 years old so you don't really want to do too much with these sort of things some people like them perfect but I like them to show that they've actually got a bit of wear but obviously in nice clean working condition so I'll, I won't work on them, them little bits too much but we obviously want to lift all this grime that's on there and as you can see from the inside as well very grimy, we want to return that colour to as normal as possible uh, also retaining the original sort of logos and stuff so there was a logo that was supposed to be there and I actually found that stuck down the side so I'll just relocate that on there like that when I've cleaned the unit and that will be back to as it come out of the factory basically so but just to show you the state of this actual record deck there look at that look obviously been sitting in the shed the rubber mat lucky enough is nice and pliable still these sometimes can go really really hard so I'll be giving that some sort of a uh, cleaning and well I mean look at the grime on there the deck will be removed totally re-lubricated uh, re if it's not in too bad condition under all this which I presume that it isn't um, as you can see they do tend to clean up right there's no corrosion on the deck at all by the looks of it so basically that'll be a good clean for that one and what I've actually done there these are all the uh, fitments off of the record player and as you can see things like the handles um, again you can actually buy these uh, handles but because these are literally just tarnished I, what I'll try and do first I'll give them a quick rub over with some wire wool some very fine wire wool just to hopefully remove the tarnish and basically just see what we're left with the actual straps very rarely do suffer so that's the original strap on that which I hope to retain and as you can see these things here are what these are the feet that are stuck in the side of the unit and I'm sure you can see they was once upon a time they'll either be chrome or nickel plated and they are beyond use as you can see now these things if you you can't really buy these you can try and find, I've looked for ages to try and similar sort, find similar sort of things and the nearest things you can buy are sort of sort of staples what they put around furniture and stuff like that but I think these things were called domes of death very unusual name, I don't know why they were called that, if anyone does know why they were called domes of death uh, leave a comment underneath, I'd like to know that, but uh, I don't personally know again all the original screws are there, quite a few of these are brass screws so the heads, providing they've not been chewed up uh, can go back in, the other screws are just normal metal uh, uh, steel screws but as I say, a lot of the finishing screws, although they may look filthy they're in pretty good condition, they can be reused this speaker uh, again it's got holes in it, the cone is uh, missing its dome on the top of it but people do actually repair these, I'm not really going to bother repairing this because I've actually got a spare speaker anyway but you see speakers that are a lot worse than this that actually can be repaired so don't think just because the speaker's got a hole in it or it's deteriorated that they can't be repaired they can, the rest of this is an original speaker obviously and um, I will probably just keep that in stock now I won't reuse this one, I'll be fitting this with a, either a new unit or a, a, a unit out of another one which is actually fine again the knobs suffer uh, with the lack of the, 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 um, the Chinese hats they're called there's normally a chrome or a brass or gold coloured plated cap that sits on top of these knobs and this mark you're seeing here is basically just the what's that? It sits on top of these knobs knobs, I know, knobs Sharon sits on top of these knobs and the bit you're actually seeing here, I've had a lot of people think that this is actually rust but all that is is basically the old glue which has failed and the silver or uh, gold cap has actually popped off and you're left with that so you can do one or two things there, you can either uh, rub that down there, that glue so it's nice and smooth and then what I've actually done before is to put some um, uh, vinyl, gold coloured vinyl or whatever in there and cut it to shape and I've, I've actually got over it like that failing that you can leave them blank or paint them or whatever you want to do it's entirely up to you but again the knobs are original Dan set uh, knobs so nice to use them if you can things like grill covers and stuff like that again we'll clean up back control panels again we'll clean up you can smooth that off 
on a bit of emery paper, very fine emery paper like that, and then just put some white paint on over the letters and just wipe off the surface, and you should be left with some nice uh, lettering back on the original piece. So there's that as well. That's the old three pin plug. Never use the old three pin plugs that come with these things. As you can see there, from a safety point of view, the whole pins there are solid conductors. In other words, it is not a safety plug. This is one of the old ones before the safety plugs come out, where people used to pull the plug out, and if it was a bit tight, they'd accidentally touch the pin with their finger, trying to get a better grip and actually get a shock. Newer plugs have got this plastic half below the first part of the uh, pin, so that you, if you do accidentally touch it, you are, you're only touching a bit of plastic. So that is a, that is not a safety plug. Never use that. Never send it out with that. Uh, that should be uh, discarded to the bin. Here's the old amplifier. Again, covered with dust and dirt. But as I said to you, this is a fully working amp. Believe it or not, with all this dust and crap in here this actually did work and it didn't work too bad but what I'll be doing is changing a few components on here don't forget I do not expect anybody to try and repair these just by watching this video I am a qualified electrician so the uh, chances of you knowing exactly what you're doing there is going to be remote if you don't have any idea of what you're doing so just send this whole package off to someone uh, who knows how to repair these things it may charge you 25 pounds it may cost you 35 pounds but at least you're getting it done by a professional who knows what they're doing and you are taking the element out of uh, probably killing you or somebody else so that's fully uh, my recommendation there do not touch these units unless you know what you're doing get them repaired by somebody else the rest of the unit as you know that, that there for example is just the cleaning lubrication that is a cleaning lubrication this is clean up and replace so basically this is something anyone can really do as a little project or a hobby whether you're doing it for yourself or whether you're doing it to make any uh, make a profit providing you can get these at the right price uh, you can make a great profit on them so that's the amplifier as I say I'll be looking into that myself now this grill is what makes a downset Bermuda a downset Bermuda this one is obviously beyond repair but um, what I'm going to do here with this one is to actually create a new front grill now you're never going to create the grill with this sort of thing so don't even try to bother patching that sort of thing up what I'm going to do with this one is to cut out with my Dremel tool the downset badge and I'm going to cut out around there again with a Dremel or a saw be, just be careful you, you get, it, get it actually accurate and just be left with these two units there the rest of the grill was, will be scrap but I will keep these obviously parts and keep the rest of this grill because sometimes you do get a, a, a downset Bermuda with a corner taken out of it for example or a little piece missing now with a Dremel tool you can obviously cut because it's a square in pattern it's easy to cut down straight lines there and actually take a replacement bit fit it into the uh, other grill and repair it because you're dealing with just straight lines so they're easy to match up and once you actually give this a spray uh, clean down and respray out the part will look like new so never throw these old grills away even though they are broken they could come in handy for a second uh, repair from a different unit which isn't so critical as this one so yeah that's what I've got planned for that one okay then well I'm going to leave you with that for the moment because um, Sharon wants to go out so we're going to go down the road I say she wants to go out which is on the computer playing bleating games again look unbelievable so yeah this is just a Sunday afternoon vlog here we're, we're just having a little tinker about We've had a little clean up and all that, and um, so all we're going to do now is go down the road, do a bit of shopping. I'm going to come back and I'm going to start working on this. There you go, just a little quick one on this old Dan Sepp Bermuda we was repairing. I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and it's given you a bit of an insight. So just have a look for these old record players. They are about go on websites like pre-loved locations, leave a wanted item, say that wanted old record players, cash waiting stuff like that, or even put a notice in your old uh, shop window or whatever. Uh, old record players wanted cash waiting you know you're looking at paying uh, a few pounds for these you don't want to be paying too much money basically but um, this can be your little project, be a little hobby and when you start earning some money doing this sort of stuff don't forget I do this 
on a professional level because I actually make money when I sell these. Or even if you do buy something, for example, I mean, I've bought record players in the past and they've been absolutely beyond repair or they've not been a fashionable model which sells for a lot of money. And I've stripped them down and sold them for parts and made money that way. So this is a little money making opportunity, providing you, you put yourself in the realms of finding these sort of things. They are out there. Near enough, everybody who's got a house, who's got a loft, has probably got one of these in it, or there's <laughs> definitely someone in the street. So, you know, if, if you're putting your advert in a local paper or if, an advert in a local shop window for a month for a free pound, how much are they, Sharon? I'm not sure. About well, three pounds, I suppose, for a month, isn't it? Sharon's put um, leaflets for us in uh, shop windows in different niches, for example, and you do get some reply. And then, well, what have you lose? What have you got to lose if, you, if nothing happens? You lost three quid. It's just, just part of the game, really. So if you like my little ideas and the stuff that I do, don't forget all the stuff that I do you can actually make money out of. So if you are interested, do rate, comment and subscribe. And I will answer your questions and you, you might even have ideas of other things that you can um, make money out of. But just put your selection, your questions in the comment box below or the, leave some feedback or whatever. You know, and, uh, At the end of the day, if I can make some money doing this sort of stuff, I'm sure you can as well. Thank you. Bye-bye.